Hi everybody, I'm Igor Smirnov, International Grandmaster and a Chess Coach. This is the lesson Finding the Best Moves Quickly. Chess players often tell me that they can find the correct moves during home analysis, but they can't find them during practical gameplay. If given enough time, these players can find the best move. The problem, however, is that in a real game you have to move quite quickly or risk losing on time. Different chess educational materials provide varying information on chess, rules, principles, ideas, and so on. On the one hand, this information can be very useful. Unfortunately, this can make your task even harder because you need to think about so many different things in such a short time frame. On average, you have only about 3 minutes per move, maybe less. This brings us to my next point. It's not enough to have basic fundamental chess knowledge. You should know how to apply this knowledge quickly. As I'm sure you're aware, strong players know some practical methods of how to do this. In this lesson, I would like to share some of these conservation methods with you. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you should plan to budget your time prior to the beginning of a game. Maybe this seems obvious to you. Okay, then I have some questions. For example, how long you should think about every move when you have two hours for a game? Or what about a 30-minute game or a blitz game? Can you give me a concrete answer? If you are unsure, let's think about it together. An average game consists of approximately 40 moves. Of course, it can be much longer or shorter, but we are talking about an average. Therefore, if you have 2 hours for a whole game, it's 2 hours divided by 40 moves and it'll be 3 minutes per move. By the way, the standard time control 90 minutes plus 30 seconds per move gives you approximately 3 minutes per move also. So, you can easily figure out how long you should think about every single move in a certain game. Of course, this is only an approximate rule, however, it gives you a guideline. OK, let's go to the next principle. You should know when to think during a practical game and when to make moves quickly. There are four principles to think about here. And here is the first one. In the opening, you should play quickly. The opening is the easiest stage of a game, really. As I hope you know, in this stage you mainly need to develop pieces. You should simply realize three main tasks of the opening. If you studied my course The Grandmaster of Secrets, you should know what I'm talking about here. So, we may conclude that in the opening you should play quickly and save your time in case complications arise at the later stages of the game. It's better to make a few superficial moves in an opening than to blunder late in the middle game in time trouble. Here is the second advice. At the end of the opening, you should take some time to think and compose a plan. Most chess players have heard this, however, often they don't follow this advice anyway. And the bottom line is this. If you have a concrete plan, you will make the following moves quickly. If you haven't got a plan, then you have to think for a long time about every single move. Let's observe some examples. It is wise turn here. And now it's time for one to think of and compose a middle game plan. White's plan here is to attack the d6 weakness. Thus white needs to double rooks on the d-file and put the bishop on this diagonal. Maybe it will take some time to compose this plan initially. Once you have the plan though, you will then make a lot of moves quickly. This method is very effective practically. In 
in the game that followed. A4, Queen C7, Rook A2, White is preparing doubling rooks on the D file, then B3, Bishop A3, so White is just realizing his plan, and Rook A D2. So White got a better position, and in the end he won the game. Here is another example, and it's the wise turn again. It's the end of the opening stage, and here white should compose a plan. White has a pawn majority on the queen side, and a c pawn without a counterpart. So white's plan is to realize these positional advantages. So he played c4, bishop g6, rook c1, supporting the c5 advancement. Knight c5 takes b4, realizing his pawn majority, rook c8, queen b3, supporting his pawns and maybe eventually attacking the b7 pawn somewhere in the future. Uh, well, I'm not saying that you should make such moves without any consideration. However, it will be much easier for you to find a good move quickly if you focus the attention solely on the realization of your plan. The game continued bishop d6, rook fd1 supporting the pawns, and in the end white was able to utilize his past pawns in the center. It's important to take note, note of the idea that you not only could, but you should play quickly after you have composed a plan you need to compensate the time that you have spent on composing the plan initially. Here is the next idea. You should calculate variations in tactical positions and think in general in strategic positions. One of the biggest problems that plagues modern chess players is that they always calculate variations. It takes a lot of time and effort to do this and often it doesn't help to find the best move. Therefore, you should focus your attention on calculation only in tactical position. What do I mean with a tactical position? Let's look at a concrete example. It's Black's turn here. This position is quite calm and simple. There are no forcing lines or tactical variations here. Thus it's rather strategic position and Black should think here about general motifs, plans, maneuvers and so on. Black played knight a son to transfer the knight to the battle square and knight b5, then rook a2, h6, g3. These moves didn't require calculation. There was no reason for Black to calculate anything either for white, by the way. This brings us to a new question. When it's time to calculate? Here is the rule. You should start calculating when there is contact between your pieces and your opponent's pieces, or when you are going to try and create such contact. In the game black played knight g5. This move creates contact between the knights and it means that the position became tactical and it requires calculation. Knight takes, queen takes, queen g4, here is another tactical position. So black should focus his attention mainly on calculation and should not think much about general ideas or plans. Queen c1, king g2, queen c4. We can see that the pieces attack each other, or when someone makes forcing moves, then you can realize that it is definitely a tactical situation. Queen took, pawn took on c4, then rook d8, the rook is going to make check on d1, or to go inside somewhere on the d3. So rook d3 was played. Now black is going to attack with the move rook b3, and the position is going to remain tactical. Black won this game pretty soon thereafter. Okay, 
We have spent a good amount of time talking about a focus. In any position you should calculate variations and think about general principles. I'm just saying that you should focus most of your attention only on one of these things depending on the type of position you have in front of you. Here is the next rule. When you feel that your position can become winning or losing, you should take as much time as you need. It's Black's turn now. The position is very sharp. Black has an extra piece while White is attacking. Now's the critical moment for Black. If he is able to defend successfully, he will win. If Black doesn't find a good way to defend, then he will lose quickly. So time doesn't matter too much here. Black should think as long as he needs to find the best defensive move. In the game Black really did the best move for Rookie Cheat, and he got the winning position just after the next few moves. Bishop f4, Bishop b4, now White can't play King e2 because of Knight c3 fog, so Black's winning. By the way, at the starting position of this example, the move Rook h8 was really the only way for Black to play for a win. Thus, Black was obliged to find it spending as much time as necessary. Ok, these were some ideas about time conservation during a practical game. During this video, I've given you some useful tools. If you want to apply them in your games, you should draw attention to the time aspect. You should control your time while playing a game. It's very important. Just players often underestimate how long have they thought about a move. Players usually pay attention on the clock only when they feel that they are running out of time. However, at this point it's already too late. If you control your time constantly, you will never find yourself in time trouble. There are two more practical recommendations which will help you to save time. And here is the first one. I recommend you look at the clock every time when you press the clock button. At this point you should realize two things. The first one. How long you have thought about your last move. At the beginning of the lesson, we discussed that you need to plan an average time spending for a single move. So when you look at the clock, you should detect whether your last move took too much time or not. And the second one. Compare your time indication with your opponent's time. It's extremely important not to spend more time than your opponent. If both you and your opponent are in a time trouble, that's ok. You're still in the same situation. A really unacceptable situation is when you are in a time trouble while your opponent has enough time. This is a very difficult situation. That's why sometimes you may think for a long time, but not longer than your opponent. It's very important practical rule. Also, I would like to recommend that you use your opponent's time. This seems obvious, but a lot of chess players still walk around while their opponents are thinking. Ok, I gave you quite a lot of recommendations regarding effective time management. If you use it in your practice, you will never be in a time trouble. However, what if you suddenly appear in a time trouble? What should you do then? Here I also have some recommendations for you. And here is the first one. Simplify the position. Exchange pawns and bases to make it simpler. This will reduce your chances for a blunder. The second item. Don't start tactical complications. It's similar with the previous thing. The third one. Accumulate some time before starting complications. Maybe this recommendation is not so clear to you. 
Let's look at a concrete example. It's West's turn. West certainly has a huge advantage. He is a pawn up and has two connected pass pawns on the queen side. The only problem for White was that he was down on time. What should the player do in such situation? By the way, it's important to note that the time control was 90 minutes plus 30 seconds per move. The solution is that here White should do nothing and just collect some time. White may play rook d1, he even may play king b1 and then go back in c2. The bottom line is this. White should quickly make moves which doesn't change anything. Finally, White will collect a few extra minutes getting 30 seconds for every move. Only then White may start realizing his plan. However, in the game White decided to play aggressively and realize his plan immediately. So he played knight d6 and then b4. Black suddenly responded bishop d5. The situation became very complex and of course it was hard for White to calculate the variations properly due to the time lag. If White had a few extra minutes, he would probably find the move rook c3, which saves the advantage. Since White hadn't enough time, he played knight b5 and got a losing position after rook takes c4. This example shows how it is important to accumulate time before starting complications. Let's look again at these recommendations to remember them better. If you follow these three simple recommendations, you will play well, even in a time trouble. Now you know how to manage your time effectively during a practical game. So it's time to practice these ideas, do it and enjoy your success. Thanks for your attention, talk to you soon in the next videos, bye!